Hello everyone, I'm Mark Snodgrass, and today I wanted to go over the date range uh, filter in Domo. It's a very powerful feature, allows you to show a lot of different date ranges on one single card and give a lot of flexibility to the user. And I'll also show you um, a couple beast modes. Uh, you give even more flexibility with that date range. So let's get started. So you see here, I've got a card showing a dates. I'm using the Domo calendar uh, data set for this demonstration. If you haven't um, added that to your uh, data sets, you definitely should. If you go to the data center and connectors and then search for Domo dimensions, then this has a, a lot of different um, data sets in here. And the one I chose is calendar, and this has um, build out dates for the past and for the future and for every day of the year. And then a lot of different metrics inside of it, which are really useful uh, to use and join to your other data sets where you need to fill in missing gaps uh, or anything. So definitely encourage you to uh, download that data set and uh, take a look at it and see how you can incorporate it into uh, your other uh, data that you have. So. Up here um, is the date range filter for what the user sees. Uh, I'll take in the analyzer in a moment, but um, you often will pre-select uh, what date range you want the card to start at. And then the user can click on the down arrow and then choose different options. So you see for this month, it's showing everything in the uh, month and graphing it by the day. You can let the user choose that. You have different options of all time, current, uh, within current period to date, previous, next, in between. So we're just gonna go through these and show you what this looks like. So if I choose today, it's really only gonna show today. Pretty straightforward here. Today is July 25th, 2023. You're gonna see that in graphing by day. Uh, this week, it's gonna show you the whole week from Sunday to Saturday. Uh, and showing you those days in here and again graphing by day and so then this month pretty straightforward again going to show you july because it's evaluating hey i'm in july right now the current date is july so i'm going to show you every day in july and it's important here you see not only the past days but the future days in here when you're looking at current and this to this week or this month same with this quarter it's going to say hey what quarter am i in Right now, I'm going to show you all the dates in the quarter that your data set has. And then for this year, then we're going to see everything from January 1 to December 31st here of 2023, because it's evaluating what year we're in and then showing you that whole year. Now, if you wanted to be able to stop, you know, at the date uh, that you're in and not show future dates, then this period to date is useful. So you've got week to date in here. So now we're just showing uh, essentially Sunday, Monday, Tuesday uh, here and not showing those future days in the week. And then same for the month. We're going to show all the way up to today from the beginning of July. And then same with the quarter, uh, which for July, this quarter we're in starts on July 1, so really look at the month to date. And then year to date, going to go from January up to the current date. Then previous uh, is pretty straightforward uh, as well. Again, we're going to just see yesterday here on this and previous week. And that's going to, so it's going to value what week I am right now. I'm going to go back one week and previous month showing that. So now we're just showing June in here and previous quarter. Again, now we're looking at, hey, what quarter am I in right now? Let's back up one quarter and show that. It's nice is that you don't have to do any beast modes to do this. It's just all built in and doing that. And again, you can also change the graphing by uh, 
month in here. So then this is going to total up by that. And rather than by day, you give the, the user the option to do that. And then I'm going to come back to last here in a minute, but next is uh, worth pointing out, but it's really the opposite of previous. So again, we're going to look at next week and next month. So we're seeing uh, all of August now. And next quarter, we're going to jump ahead to, to the start of the next quarter. So showing October. And next year, now we're going to evaluate and look at 2024. It's going to show all of that in here. Let me come back to uh, previous and last. I think this is what can um, throw a lot of people off here because it's maybe not totally intuitive. You see, la I've got last one year showing, and it's only going to January first and showing it to the end of this. This is really the exact same thing if we went to current and said this year, we get the exact same chart. So when it's at last and and set to one, it's really the exact same thing as uh, current. So uh, that's kind of important to know. You might think, well, last one year, it's going to go back from today and go back one year worth. It's That's not what it does here. It's just looking at what year I'm in, and that's going to count that as the first one. And then the kind of the big bonus is that you can say, well, let me go back two years and show that. And we can graph this by month to make this a little easier to see here. So now we're seeing two years, but again, going to the beginning of that calendar year. So counting all of 2023 as one and counting 2022 as the second in the two years and showing you all of that. So those are really important to know the difference there between uh, what current does and what previous does and what last does and the different options in here. You can see this and we'll go back three years and show that as 21, 22, and 23. So it's going to keep that in mind that it's going to show include all of the calendar year in that. Between is another option. And this one I would not recommend a whole lot of, but it's because you, um, if you're going to set this in Analyzer, it's going to hard code dates in here. And um, then you're, you're kind of stuck with that. Um, if you leave it open here for the end user, yeah, here at this point, they can choose their dates, but choosing this in Analyzer is going to lock that in and not be kind of forward, uh, allowing things as dates go forward. Um, then you're going to miss out on new data. So unless you're really wanting to lock into something, I wouldn't recommend uh, using that. Let me go into Analyzer. There's often cases where maybe I don't want to show um, the future I don't want to include today, perhaps. So even if I have uh, choosing this uh, period to date, the week to date, that it's still going to show today. Maybe I don't want to show today so much. So you can add a beast mode here that would look like this. So where your value, where your date field equals today's date, the current date function, then that's today. Otherwise, it's not today. And you can then throw this into to beast mode, the filter, and then filter to not today. And it's going to drop out today's field. Uh, you can also extend this further and say, hey, when it's date is greater than or equal to current date future, then you can also give the flexibility about if you've got a different um, filter set on here, if you've got maybe the uh, this month, but you don't want to necessarily show the future, then you can add that as an option in there. And sorry, actually, well, let's uh, only show not today. Yeah, so that's what we want. And yep, now we get back to just everything before today. So if you're using the last, then you can uh, use that option. Uh, that's another way to, to do that. So that's a really helpful beast mode to do that. The other one is about, hey, I don't want to show the current 
month. Maybe I don't want to show incomplete months. So we've got this maybe set to this year. Um, and it's going to show everything. Or it's, maybe we've got it set to last five months, but we don't want to show the current month. Then the last day function is really helpful. So the last day function is going to look at your your date field and then come up with what the last day in the month is. So it's going to look at here and say, hey, this is July 3rd. And it's going to say perform the last day function on it, make it July 31st. And then it's going to look at the current date, you know, July 25th, and perform the last day function and get July 31st. So then it's an easy way to evaluate the month and the date uh, together rather than looking at the month number individually, because then you also have to look at the year um, and say, hey, so now this say this will evaluate and say, yeah, it's the current month, otherwise not the current month. And then we can drag this into the thing and apply that. And we're dropping July in here. And again, same idea about uh, not showing the future. If we wanted to do that, we could do uh, the same function here. Uh, really, the greater than the future here. Oh, what did we not like here? Oh, we've got to add our win statement. Should get that out. Yep, that applied now. So now we've got June and earlier in there, and so we're excluding that current month. So those are two really useful beast modes to add into uh, your card options if you want to give users more control, and you could turn these on as quick filters and make them accessible for the user then to toggle as well. So if you found that helpful, as always, feel free to reach out uh, if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.